Navy Pier has a diameter of 140 feet. It stands 10 feet off the ground. The wheel has 40 gondolas that seat each, six passengers each. It takes about six minutes for the Navy Pier Ferris wheel to complete one rotation. Based on that information, we need to draw a diagram of the Navy Pier Ferris wheel in the boarding platform, fill in the necessary information, and also sketch the graph. Okay, so let's first um, label things that we know. So I'm going to uh, write a circle. I'm going to make a circle like this. We know the diameter of the Ferris wheel is 140. The diameter goes through the center of the circle, as we know. And also it stands 10 feet off the ground, right? So this is the ground level, right? So this is 10 feet. Okay, so 40 gondolas, right? So 40 gondolas spread out uh, around the circle. We don't need to draw them. Uh, it takes six minutes to complete one rotation, right? So six minutes per rotation, right? That's very important. We're going to be using that for our math. All right, so now let's draw the graph of this. Um, notice that um, in order to draw a graph of it, the graph will be about the height and about time, right? So as time progresses, the height from the base of this Ferris wheel will increase, right? From 10, that's the initial height, 10, it will increase to the maximum height of 150, right? 10 plus 140. So that will be the maximum height and that will be the minimum height, 10. All right, so now... Um, since this is a periodic function, right, because the Ferris wheel just goes around the circle, it can complete a second circle, third circle, and fourth and fourth, so this is a periodic function, so which is why we're being asked to write a cosine equation and a sine equation for this curve, for the situation. Okay, so now how do we write a cosine equation? And at the same time, we can also sketch the graph of that cosine. Notice that we're starting from a minimum value of 10. And as we know, the normal cosine function y is equal to cosine x, for example, starts from a maximum point and then goes down for the minimum point and then goes back up for the maximum point. But in here, we're starting from the minimum point and going to the maximum, right? So that means we're kind of making the upside down cosine uh, graph, right? So starting from the minimum, minimum point and going from the maximum. So if we first need to label the graph, so we know that the x-axis will be the time in minutes. Okay, so time minutes. And then y will be the height in feet. Okay, y will be the height in feet and uh, x is the time in minutes. So we know we're starting from 10. So we can label each, every two boxes as being um, well, actually, no, every one box would be better because uh, we, we need as far as 150 feet uh, of height. So we're going to have each box be, uh, by an uh, grow by an increment of 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? So that will be the maximum height right there. Okay, so we're starting, and, and then the X will be labeled with minutes, right? Minutes. So let's have every two boxes one minute. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now um, we're starting from the minimum height of 10. So we're starting right here at zero minutes, because zero minutes is when the time is, it begins to be counted, right? That's the base from which the launch is occurring. So starting from 10, and then the maximum height, a pre, a pre, six minutes is the entire rotation, so that means all the way around the circle is three minutes, and since the speed is constant, right, speed is constant of the wheel, uh, we assume that half of the circle will be exactly half of the time required, right, for it to travel all the way up to the maximum point. So we assume that it's three minutes uh, from the launch to the maximum point. So that means three minutes will uh, at three minutes at x is equal to three, you will have a maximum of 150 there. All right, and also when you go back, uh, when you reach six minutes, you'll be back at the minimum height again, 10. All right. Okay, so now uh, we know that the cosine function, 
can be expressed like this. A cosine B, that's the standard equation for cosine, x minus C plus D. So let's find these components. A stands for the amplitude, right? Amplitude is the distance from the midline to the maximum point or the same distance from the midline to the minimum point. So what that means is that uh, the amplitude will determine the midpoint between uh, 150 and 10. So that means we can find the absolute value. So absolute value. And why absolute is because um, A can be positive or negative, right? We just want to see what the distance is precisely where the midline lies. All right. So we know that's the average between 150 and 10, right? Because um, that's going to be the amplitude, right? So that's going to be 150 plus 10 divided by 2. Now here we go, we got to be careful though, because that's not the amplitude, that's rather the, um, that's rather the midline. So what I'm trying to find is the midline, and that's precisely the D value, all right? So the D value is the midline itself, is the value of the midline. So that's going to be an average of 10 and 150 divided by 2. So that's 160 divided by 2, which is equal to 80, all right? So the midline is at 80, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And again, the midline is where is exactly in the middle between the highest and, and the lowest points, right? That's the average of the highest and the lowest points. Okay, now the amplitude is going to be the distance from the midline to the top or the distance from the midline to the bottom. And as you can see, you can easily find the distance uh, from uh, midline to the bottom. So that's going to be 80 minus 10, which is 70. Okay, so the absolute value, that distance is 70. However, since this, um, since this uh, cosine will be upside down, and by the way, let's also draw the, um, the uh, other points. We need, two, we need four major points, right? Well, actually five, because we're back at the original point, uh, original height. But we need four major points. Besides that, we know that... Uh, Precisely, uh, there will be a point on the midline, twice actually. The first point will be right in the middle between the three minutes and zero minutes, which is one and a half minutes. So we know the midline will have a point there. And also, right between six and uh, three will be four and a half minutes, again at the midline, right? That's just the, uh, the rules of having a cosine function. The two inner points besides the maximum or minimum, whichever way that you start or open up, will be on the midline, right? So these two points must be on the midline. Right, so the amplitude, uh, the absolute value of the amplitude is 70. However, the, uh, the true value of A itself is negative 70. And why? Because we're, start, we're making this cosine upside down. All right, we're making it upside down. So normally the cosine starts from the highest point, goes down, and then goes up. But since we're making it upside down, the A value must compensate for that and make it possible, right? So it's got to be minus 70 and not positive 70. All right. So we go like this. It looks something like this. It's not a super drawing, but you get the picture. This is one full wave, one full cycle of the cosinusoidal wave, the cosine function. All right. So now let's find the other components. Now we need to find the value of B. How do you find the B? Use the formula to find the, uh, use the formula along with a period. Okay, so we know that the formula is going to be two pi being divided by that b value should give you the period value. The period value is going to be from zero to six. It's the amount required to have a complete cycle, one full cycle. One full cycle occurs from zero to six, right? So the period is going to be six. If you solve for b in this case. Let's label it greenish, green color, B. Uh, if you solve for B, B is going to be equal to precisely 2 pi over 6, right? Just change these places. 2 pi over 6 will be pi over 3 if you uh, simplify that, right? 2 pi over 6 is equal to pi over 3. So that's going to be equal to pi over 3. And then notice there's no uh, horizontal shift C, right? C is responsible for horizontal shift. There's no horizontal shift because... Cosine usually starts, uh, the cosine wave starts at the x value of 0, right, at the y-axis, right? So there's no uh, horizontal shift, 
we don't need parentheses, we can just put x. Now the d value, we already put it down, that's going to be the value of the midline, right? So it's plus 80. Good. So we found our cosine function. Now, how do we find the equivalent sine function? Normally, you know, sine function starts from the origin. One, one, uh, the wave of the sine start, starts, starts from the origin. So you can treat, uh, and you know that the sine usually increases, right? If, when it's not upside down, when it's just a parent function, y is equal to sine x. It starts from the origin, goes up to the maximum point, goes back down, reaching half of the period on the x-axis, goes down to the minimal point, and goes back up again to the x-axis. Right? So the midline would be the x-axis for a parent sine function. However, the midline here is 80, so you can treat this as the starting point of, the, uh, of your sine function. So it goes up, goes back down, reaching half of the period, right? because that's precisely three units. Right? From here to here, it's precisely three minutes. It's just uh, translated to the right side. So that means, um, but you have to see where's this point uh, shifted, right? So you can use the graphical way to understand how to shift it from the origin to that point. You move one and a half uh, units to the right, and then you move up 80 units to shift the beginning point of the sine function. Right? So, so you know that um, your... your uh, Amplitude should be positive because you're not making the sine upside down, right? The sine function starts normally, goes to the top first, right? So it's going to be positive 70. You know that pi over 3 is going to be still there because pi over 3 was the result of using the formula involving the period, right? And the period for the sine function will be absolutely the same, right? Because this, this is exactly half the period. This is 3 minutes, right? So another 3 minutes will be reached right there. Right? So you can picture this as being your complete wave, right? From here, a sine function wave right there, right? So that's a period of 6. So that means 2 pi over 3 should still be there, just like it was for cosine. However, there's a, a, a horizontal shift, right? Because there's a 1.5 units to the right shift. So you have to do x minus that c value, which is positive 1.5. So 1.5. And then also the midline is still 80, so you have to add plus 80. Now, if you're not sure how to use the graphical way to find what we just did, there is actually a, an algebraic way to do this. And I'm going to show you how to do this algebraically. So we're going to use a very good formula to do this. It's going to be called cosine x is equal to sine pi over 2 minus x. This is a powerful formula that will help you understand how to transform the given cosine into the sine function using algebra. All right, I'm going to teach you how to do this. So first we're going to start, uh, first we're going to start uh, translating the cosine into a sine using this cosine. So we're going to cut, so notice that um, the uh, amplitude here in the parent functions is 1. So that means we're going to copy the negative 70 like it was for cosine for the amplitude, right? So we're going to copy negative 70. Okay, cosine. Now we're going to do pi over 2 minus that angle. Now what is the angle for the cosine here? It's pi over 3x. So it's the product of pi over 3 and x. It's not just the x here, right? We replace this x with pi over 3x because that's an angle in itself, that product. So we're going to do minus pi over 3 x. And also not to forget, there is a zero horizontal shift for both. But here there is a, a horizontal shift of 80, so it must be copied as well, right? So Because whatever that d value is, it was also the same d value there, right? So here the d value is 80, so the sign should also have the same d value. All right, so now the next step, you're still far away from, you know, um, oh, by the way, this should have been a, uh, this should have been a sine function. I don't know why I put cosine because we're trying to transform cosine into a sine. So this should be a sine. All right. So now it's still far away from making it look like this. Okay. But I'm going to show you how to work this out and to use other formulas, trigonometric formulas. So notice that um, we can make it look like um, we can take the pi out. Okay. We can take the pi out. And um, 
we can also write 6 pi over 6. And why? Because we know that we need to get rid of this with these denominators. The LCD of the 2 and 3 is 6. Right? So we can use the we can use the LCD um, as the top value there. But wh whatever we do to the top, we also do the same thing to the bottom. Right? So 6 pi over 6 corresponds to 1 pi that we took out. Right? So if you take out the pi, 6 pi over 6 is the same thing as having a pi. Right? So now, what's going to happen next? Notice that 6 will be divided by 2 to give us 3. And this 6 being divided by that 3 will give us 2. Right? So we can write minus 2x plus 80. Okay? But because of this, since we divided this 6 by 2 and this 6 by 3, this 6 goes away. So we can just erase it. Right? So that's algebraically already done with, right? So we can just write pi over 6 clean without any further ado. All right, so now that we have that, we can keep working. We can write, make it look like minus 70 sine. Now, we need pi over 3 instead of pi over 6, right? So if we write pi over 3 like it is here, um, how, how are we going to do this? If we write pi over 3, uh, what we need is... Um, so if, if this 6 was divided by 3, um, uh, was divided by 2, okay, that means um, pi should be also uh, divided by 2. Right? So if 6 is divided by 2 to give us this 3, pi should also be divided by 2, otherwise we violate the concept of 1. So if pi is divided by 2, that means this division by 2 can be applied to these two, right, because... That's just the uh, nature of having a division by 2 for the pi, right? This pi over 2 can be applied as these two things being divided by 2 because that fraction pi over 2 would be distributed. So that means 3 over 2 should be expressed as 1.5, and then 2 over 2 is 1, so it's just x plus 80. All right, getting closer. Now, our goal is to have x minus 1.5 and not 1.5 minus x, right? So we need to switch these around, including their signs. So how do we do this? I'm going to make it look like um, we can put the, the minus outside like this. And if we put the minus outside, we can switch these around. And we can write x minus 1.5 using the algebraic technique. So x minus 1.5, even though the signs were switched, the minus in the front of that um, angle pi over 3 will compensate for that switch of signs right? that we did. And now we're going to use another powerful formula. You know that since the sine is an odd function, sine of negative x is the same thing as negative sine x. That's another very powerful formula that you should recognize because the sine function is odd. Whenever it's odd, the angle negative can be taken outside as the negative for that sine. So what that means is we can take out the negative pi over 3 and place it uh, where that negative 70 is. But since the, the 70 is already negative, the double negative there that we take out will make it positive. All right? So it's going to be sine of pi over 3, x minus 1.5 plus 80. Bingo. So you've achieved the same result using the algebra techniques that I just taught you how to do using two very incredible formulas, right? Same result as you see here. All right, so now moving on. So now we've showed how to find the cosine and sine equations and also sketch the graph. Now we're going to answer the next questions. Uh, what is the circumference of the wheel? How do we find that out? The circumference of the wheel, we know, is just the formula pi times d, right? Pi times the diameter. All right, and um, what's the diameter? 140, right? So it's going to be just 140 pi feet. The second question, the second question asks you to find what? At what speed is the wheel traveling? Please give your answer in feet per second. All right, so let, let's label it S, speed. All right, so how do we find the speed? We know that, we know that the circumference the circumference is 140, uh, 140, 140 pi feet. And that's achieved per uh, 6 minutes. 
because it takes six minutes to rotate from the beginning to that same place around the circle, around the Ferris wheel, right? It takes six minutes for a given gondola to start and then finish it uh, one complete lap, circular lap, right? So then we have to transform this because it says in feet per second. So we have to change the minutes into seconds. So we know that one minute takes 60 seconds, right? So the minutes cancel out. So that will be 360 on the bottom, 140 divided by 360, uh, reduce it as 14 over 36, or 7 over 18, right? So it's going to be 7 pi over 18, which is about 1.22 feet per second, right? So that's the speed at which the wheel is traveling, 1.22 feet per second. All right, so now the next set says what? The next set says, if you begin your ride at the base of the wheel, what is your height after one minute, four minutes? All right, so let's find height at one minute first. How do we find the height at one minute? We just plug in the one value into the equation. Let's use the sine equation for that, and then we're going to find the height y. All right, so it's going to be sine of 5, 3, and again, we're going to put the 1 instead of the x because we're testing the 1 minute for the height. Minus 1.5 plus 80. So that's going to be... Um, how much is that going to be? That's going to be minus 0 0.5, so minus a half. And don't forget that this is a complete angle for the sine. So let's see what that's going to be. So... That's going to be negative pi over 6. Sine of negative pi over 6 is going to be negative a half. Right? So negative a half plus 80. Um, what is that going to be? That's going to be negative 35 plus 80. 80 minus 35 is 45 feet. All right. So now let's find h at. So this is uh, height at 1 minute. Let's find the height at 4 minutes. Again, plugging in the 4 instead of this 1 now into the same equation, right? So we're going to do 4, this time 4 minutes, minus 1.5 plus 80. All right, so that's going to be, uh, what is that going to be? 2.5, which is 5 over 2, right? 5 over 2 is the result of this, 5 over 2 as a fraction. 5, 2 times 5 over 3. Uh, the 3 and 2 multiplies, uh, so that will be 6. So 5 pi over 6. So sine of 5 pi over 6 plus 80. So what is that going to be? Sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half, right? So 1 half. Don't forget this multiplies. So that will be 70 divided by 2, which is 35. 35 plus 80 is 150 feet. Okay? Good. So that will be the height after 4 minutes at four minutes okay and and it makes so basically what this means is that three minutes will be 115 feet 150 feet so that means uh, four minutes will be beyond the half of the circle right and beyond the half the height is decreasing again right it's decreasing back to the smallest value again right so it makes sense that it's smaller than the maximum height so basically we're around here somewhere Right, because that's four four minutes precisely. Right, so that would be somewhere right there, and it's not exact graph, so don't judge it from the way I drew it. Just understand that it's probably somewhere here. Okay. All right. So now, what does the next section say? It says. It says, at what approximate heights will you reach the following heights? 150 feet. Uh, 100 feet. So now. Notice that it's, it's plural. It says what approximate times. Now, it, it, you should be very careful because 100 feet comes before 150, right? And it also comes, so let's say it's here, 100 feet, right? So that's 100. Notice that we can trace horizontally to another point that's also going to produce a height of 100 feet. So there will be two instances at which this will happen, okay? Two instances. So we should be aware of that and this time they're giving you the y value of 100 so we're going to set the y value of 100 using the sine function so the y is known to be 100 feet All right so that's going to be sine 
5 and 3, x minus 1.5 plus 8. So now there's going to be some algebra involved. I'm going to first subtract 80 from both sides. That means 100 minus 80 is 20. All right, so that's going to be that. Now the next thing to do is divide that by 70, right? So that's going to be basically 20 over 70 is 2 sevenths, right? Simplified, reduced, 20 over 70 is 2 sevenths. That's equal to the sine of 5 of 3x minus 1.5. Okay, so now it remains to actually understand how to use another formula. Notice that this, if you try to solve it using the inverse sign, you will only use one angle and you're going to produce one of these results, but you need both results. So first you're going to use the arc sign, of course. So if you take the arc sign of both sides, you will get rid of that sign clutch and this will be free. But you have to take the arc sign of the left side. So basically, if you take the arc sign on the right side, you're going to have pi over 3 times x minus 1.5 completely free. But then you need to take the arc sign of this. So it's going to be arc sign of 2 sevenths. All right, so, um, so what this means is that um, you're going to have, um, so now, how do, we, how do we find the second angle? Notice that arc sine of two sevens, your calculator will give you a single value, all right? So we're going to use another formula that's going to be actually very important for you to understand. Notice that we can use the fact that uh, sine x is equal to sine pi minus x. That's very important for you to recognize. That's a very good formula to use. Okay, so these are the formulas we've used. That formula, that formula, and now this formula. Sine x is equal to sine times pi minus x. This is true for any value of x. This is an identity. So why is this important? Is that because uh, if, if you take the arc sine of 2 over 7, you can use the fact that x, that angle that you're looking for, can be also found uh, another angle that uh, will give you the same sine value. Another angle such as this x here can be found by subtracting this angle from the pi. So basically what this means is that another version, another version that you're going to find is going to be setting the left side equal to pi minus that arc sine value. So arc sine value is that x there. So you're subtracting that x angle from the pi. Right? So this is the uh, x angle that you're talking about, and you're subtracting from the pi. Right? So pi minus the arc sine of 2 over 7. Right? So if you solve this now for x, you will get two different x values, two different angles, which will give you the same height of 100. Right? So that's what this plural times is talking about, because you need to find two x's two times in minutes, okay, at which the uh, heights are 100. All right, so now if we solve this, we're going to have pi over 3, pi over 3x minus, uh, this is 3 over 2, right, so that's going to be pi over 2 if you simplify, arc sine of 2 over 7, and here we're going to have the same thing, pi over 3x minus pi over 2 is equal to um, pi minus arc sine of 2 over 7. All right, so basically, um, I'm not going to show you every single detail of the algebra here. You have to add pi over 2 to both sides and then multiply that result by the reciprocal of 3 over pi. So basically, 3 over pi will be multiplied to this arc sine of 2 over 7 plus pi over 2. And here, the x value again, the reciprocal, 3 over pi, has to be multiplied to. Now, if you add the, if you add the pi over 2 here, you will get uh, 3 pi over 2 added with that pi, right? Pi over 2 plus pi is 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi over 2 minus the arc sine of 2 sevenths, okay? So if you do this carefully, Let's see uh, what my calculator provides for this one. I'm going to use it as I go on the video. And also, not to forget, this will give you the time in minutes, but what you need is the time in seconds, right? So what we need is to multiply this by 60 seconds. 
and then all right now to forget multiply it by 60 seconds to convert this answer to seconds all right so let's see what that's going to be so first i'm going to take the arc sign uh, and i need to be in radian mode because um, Because if I'm not in radian mode, I will get a wrong angle, right? So it's going to be 0 0.28 plus pi over 2. That's giving me 1.86. And then multiply it by 3 over 5. That's giving me 1.77 about times 60 seconds. Will give me about 106.6 seconds. Okay. All right, so 106.6 seconds. Now notice three minutes is halfway, so which, which point is that? Is that the first instance of 100 or the second one? Well, let's see, 106.6 seconds, that's uh, three minutes is how many? 60, 60 seconds per minute, three minutes is 180. So that's definitely the first instance because 180 is above that, right, in time. So this is the first instance at which the first uh, instance of 100 feet is reached. The other one, let's calculate that one. Um, you, you can also, actually because of symmetry, right, this is symmetric, uh, the sign values are symmetric around the, uh, the, the maximum point, right, so whatever you find here horizontally should be symmetric and the same distance away in time from the three minutes there. So you can just find the other time by, by uh, you know, finding the difference between the uh, between the between the 180 seconds and 106 seconds and then just add that difference to 180 to find the second one all right okay so but we can use it here and then we're going to confirm that it works that way when we check it so again i'm going to take the arc sign first to be in the radian mode that will give me 0 0.28 i'm going to negate that plus 3 pi over 2 to that I'm going to have 4.42 times the 3 over pi reciprocal. I'm going to have uh, 4.22. So I'm going to get about 253.4 seconds. All right, so this is my result. And again, you can test that it will be correct by... Um, by um, realizing that uh, 180 seconds, the three minutes, should be right in the middle in time between 106.6 and 253.4 because of symmetry, right? Because of symmetric values with respect to the maximum of the sign values there, all right? So what this means is that if you subtract 180, that should give you 73.39. Uh, 73 if you subtract the 73.39, 39 from 180, it will give you 106.6, right? So these are absolutely collect, correct values. They're equally distant from the 180 seconds on both sides. They're equidistant from that. 180 seconds is the midpoint between these two times, okay? All right, so now the last question. Now, notice that this is impossible, by the way, because 240 feet is never possible. The maximum point for this is 150 feet, right? So this is not possible. All right, so now the last part, uh, what does it say? It says, what is the length of the arc traveled by the Navy Pierce uh, Ferris wheel from the 4 o'clock to the 7 o'clock position? So we assume that it's going uh, counterclockwise. So first of all, let's find, um, let's find the um, the degrees that it takes. Let's find the degrees, and because the degrees that it takes relative to 360, the full circle, is going to be proportional to the arc length in feet that it takes relative to the circumference. All right. So we know that uh, one hour takes. Let's see. So one hour takes what? One hour takes uh, 360 divided by 12. Right, 360 is the full circle uh, measurement in degrees. You divide it by 12 because there are 12 hours in the clock, right? 
So divided by 12, you're going to get what? You're going to get 30 degrees. So one hour takes 30 degrees. So from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock will be 3 hours. Right? So 3 hours takes how many degrees? That will be 90. All right? So 90, um, 90 divided by 360 relative to the full circle is going to be 1 fourth of the circle. Okay, so one fourth of the circle. So that means if we try to determine counterclockwise first, well, actually that's clockwise because from four to seven, normally it's clockwise. So we're just going to say clockwise. So if we if we go clockwise uh, from four from four to seven o'clock uh, takes. Uh, let's determine the arc length that it takes. So that's going to be one fourth of the circle. So we're going to so we're going to we're going to take one fourth of the circumference because circumference is the total arc length around the circle, right? So one forty pi. So what is that going to be? Fourteen uh, four, uh, one forty divided by four is seventy divided by two. So that's going to be thirty five pi. Thirty five pi of feet of arc length arc length. Counterclockwise, let's determine that counterclockwise from 4 to 7. Now notice that 1 fourth, uh, if you subtract 1 fourth from the entire circle, it will, it will be, uh, I mean basically subtracting from 1, you'll have 3 fourths. Right, so three fourths. You're going to have to replace this one fourth with three fourths and multiply it to the circumference. So from four to seven o'clock takes so three four three four times one forty five one forty five, and that's going to be what? That's going to be um, well, we can just subtract, <laughs> we can subtract 145 minus 35 pi, right? That's going to be the same thing, 105 pi feet of arc length. So I hope this video was useful and fun. As you can see, there are lots of intricate uh, algebra understandings here in, involving the formulas of cosine and sine. But now you understand how to apply these rules and these formulas to understand uh, how to represent a given situation with trigonometric uh, equations. See you in my other videos. Thank you.